Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to cover off everything you need to know to get started with Matplotlib's bar charts. Let's get started. Okay, so we have a lot to cover off today. You're going to learn how to create basic bar charts in Matplotlib. We'll also cover off customizing these charts with titles and axis labels. We'll then dive a little bit deeper into changing colors and plots, as well as how to do this conditionally, such as in the example in the bottom left, where the column with the maximum value is colored red. We'll then cover off how to create horizontal bar plots, as well as stacked bar plots, including proportional stacked bar plots. We'll then create some grouped bar plots, such as the one on the far right, as well as covering how to apply different styles and customizations to your charts. All right, let's get started. So I already have a VS Code window open here, and I've already imported both pandas as PD, as well as pyplot from matplotlib as PLT. You can find the code for this sample data frame linked to in the description below. Before we dive into creating any bar charts, let's actually take a look at what the data looks like once we print it as a data frame. So I'm gonna return the data frame in the terminal. We can see here that we have a number of different columns. Our data is sorted by year. We have a column for men and a column for women's sales, and then a total column that aggregates these two columns together. So let's create our first bar plot. In order to do this, we can write plt and then just bar. Now this takes a number of different arguments. The first one we'll cover off is the x argument, which covers off which series of data we want to use as our x-axis. So here we'll pass in the year column. Now instead of passing in a y column, matplotlib asks us for a height column to tell us how high each bar within the x series should be. So we're going to pass in height, and for this let's use the total column. So we'll write in df total. Now, in order to actually show this, we can write plt show. Now let's run this. So what we can see here is that we have a bar graph that's been created. It covers off all of the different years as well as the total sales amount. Now, by default, this isn't exactly intuitive. We know what data is covered off in this graph, but a future reader may not. So let's go ahead and add in both a title as well as some axis labels for both the x and the y axis. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And so the way that we can do this is by using the title function for the title. So we can type in sales over time, for example, as the title. Now for both the x and the y axis, there's a function called x label and similarly y label. So here we can pass in year and for the y label, we can pass in sales. Now let's run this again and see what this looks like now. So we can see here that we now have descriptive titles and access labels. Now, by default, different font sizes are used, but we can also specify explicitly which font sizes we wanna use. We can do this by using the font size argument in this function. So here we can type in font size, say equals 18, and here we'll use a font size of 12. Similarly for the Y label. So let's run this and see how different our graph looks. This is a lot more readable and a lot more presentable. Now, one of the things that we may want to be able to do is actually change the color of these bars. So say we wanted to change the color of all of these bars to gray. We could do this simply by writing C uh, color equals gray. And when we run this, that color is passed into every single bar. Now, one of the things that we may want to do is draw attention to the year in which the highest number of sales were actually made. So the way that we can do this is by passing in an array that represents each bar individually and lists a column uh, a color for that. So what we might want to do is color all the different bars gray except for the one with the highest value which in this case is 2020. So the way that we can do this is by creating a new series, let's call it colors, and 
keep in mind that we have six different years and we want to color the fifth one in a different color. So what we can do is type in gray. Now say we want to make this one red, we can just type in red and then for the last one we can type in gray. Now instead of passing in a single color, we're going to pass in this entire list here. So I'll just type in colors. Now when we run this, we can see that the value for 2020 has been colored red. Now this is not the most convenient because it forces you to write out the entire list of different values. But what's worse is that 2020 might not always be the value with the highest value, forcing you to go back in and change things. So what we can do is write a list comprehension in order to determine which value is actually the highest and build that list automatically for us. If you don't know list comprehensions, I have a video tutorial that covers them off in great detail, which I'll link to right up here. So what we'll do is we'll write red if bar equals max df total else gray for bar in df total. So what this is saying is return the string red if the value for the bar is equal to the maximum of that column, otherwise return gray for each element in the value total, in the column total. So if we were to simply print this out, we could write print colors, we can see that this has returned the exact same list that we created before, but it allows the data to be more dynamic. So I'm just going to delete this here and uncomment this out. Now when we run this, we expect to see the exact same chart being created. And that's exactly what happened. Now, one of the other things you may want to do is be able to show your data as a horizontal bar chart rather than as a vertical bar chart. Matplotlib makes this relatively easy. So say we wanted to show the exact same data, but not as a, hor as a vertical bar chart, but rather as a horizontal bar chart, we can simply change the function here to be bar h. Now, we do need to make a few more changes namely that the year is now going to be on the y-axis and the total column will no longer be representing the height of our bars, but rather the width of our bars. So we're going to want to go ahead and change this to width. Now when we run this, we can see that it's returned the exact same data, but in a horizontal format rather than as a vertical format. So one of the things you may want to be able to do is change the actual width of the different bars. This is something where your aesthetics really come into play. So I've changed this back to our previous bar chart, which looked like this. So what we may want to be able to do is make these bars either thicker or thinner. So we can do this by using the width argument. So what I'll do here is type in width, and I'll spell it correctly. And the way that this works is that each bar can go up to 100% of its width, but that percentage is expressed as a value out of one. So if we used one, it would take up all of its available space and look like a histogram. Now, say we wanted to make it be 25%, we could write 0.25. Now, when we run this, we can see that we get these very skinny and very ugly bars returned. So maybe we wanna try something a little thicker, say 80% we can write 0.8. So when we run this, we get a much prettier aesthetic back. One of the things you may want to be able to do is be able to show two different series of data along your x-axis. So we have these columns here that cover off the sales of men and the sales of women over different years. What we may want to be able to do is be able to illustrate how year over year those sales have varied. The way that we can do this using matplotlib is to be able to insert two different plots into the same figure. We can write two separate bar functions directly above one another and show them in the exact same figure. So let me show you what I mean. We'll write plt bar and we'll pass in for our x parameter still our year. 
Now, for our height, what we're going to want to use is both men and women, but we'll declare them separately. So we'll write df men, and now we'll use a color, say blue. Now, I'm going to go ahead and copy this line down, and I'm going to change this to be men, and we'll change this to be women. Now I'm going to change this color here to be orange so that we can tell them apart. Now let's run this and see what happens. We can see that this isn't at all what we wanted to be able to see. However, it is actually showing us exactly what we asked it to do. However, we can't actually see the different sales done by uh, men throughout the different years, except for this one year here. So what we want to be able to do is show the columns side by side. So the way that we can do this is by changing the width and the position of each of the different columns. So I'm going to create a new variable here called width. And I'll assign it the value of 0.4, meaning 40%. So what we can do now is pass in width equals width. And so what we want to do here now is change the x position here to add in our width. And we also want to change our width of the actual column here to be width as well. So what we've done is changed the width of this bar here to be 40% of its available space. Here we've done the exact same thing. So right now, both of our bars together are taking up 80% of its available space, but we've also shifted this bar over 0.4 or 40% of its available space. Now let's run this and see whether or not it worked in the way we expected it to. So this is much better. Now there's really one big problem, and that's that our readers won't be able to tell these two bars apart without looking at your code. The way that we can fix this is by adding a legend. Now matplotlib makes this quite easy. The way that we can do this is by simply passing in a legend function. So we'll write plt legend. And now what we want to do is pass in labels into each of these different series. So we'll write label equals men and label equals women. Now let's run this and see whether or not it returns it the way that we want it to. And it does. By default, matplotlib will try and figure out where to best position your legend. Right now it's chosen this because there's a lot of white space. Now this may not always be ideal and you may have strong preferences about where you want to place it. The way that we can do this is by passing in the loc or location argument into, into the legend function. So I'll write LOC, and we can pass in, say, lower right. And when we run this now, we can see that our legend has been positioned in the lower right. Now, another type of chart you may want to do is create a stacked bar chart. It may not be as important to be able to show these differences between men and women side by side, but rather how they accumulate to a different total. The way that we can do this is by changing where each of the different bars starts. So what I mean by this is you may recall that when we didn't include these widths in here, what had happened was that these two graphs were simply overlaid. Now what we want to be able to do is actually have the position for men start at the very end of the bar for women. So the way that we can do this is by simply passing in the parameter for the height of the men into the height of the women. So the way that we'll do this is by using the bottom argument. So we'll write bottom equals df men. And it's as easy as that. So when we run this now, we can see that the values have been stacked together and matplotlib determines where this bar ends and then has the bar for the women series start in this position depending on each of the different x series values. One of the other types of charts you may want to be able to create is a proportional stacked bar chart 
where year over year you can see how the proportion between different series has changed where the total may not be as important but the proportion is. So the way that we can do this is simply by creating a stacked bar chart based on different columns namely the columns that show the proportion between the different genders. So what we can do here is actually create two new proportions. So we're going to create two columns. So we'll call the first one men proportion. And for this we're going to calculate men divided by total and multiply this by 100 just to have it be represented as a nicer percentage. Similarly, we can create a column for women here. So we'll write women proportion and we'll change this to women as well. So now we have two new columns in our data frame created and we'll simply pass these in as our heights into our existing bar chart. So we can write men proportion and we'll write women proportion. Now let's run this and see how it looks. And now we can see that our proportions here always add up to 100% and we can see in which years women sold more than men did. Now one of the last things that I want to cover off is the availability of styles within Matplotlib. We can see that we've had to pass in different colors and make different changes in terms of font sizes and all of that just to make our chart look moderately decent. Matplotlib does provide a number of different styles. So what we can do to see what styles are available is simply type in a print statement for plt style dot available. Now what this will return is simply a list of the different styles that are available. We'll go ahead is actually use the ggplot style. So let me uncomment this out. And what the only thing that we need to do is pass in plot.style and use and then the style that we want to use. So in this case we want to use ggplot. Now when we run this we'll have a very different style plot returned to us. Now this still looks very similar because we are quite we are specifying the colors that we want to use. So if we took out these parameters here we'll be able to see that Matplotlib has chosen the style's default colors in order to return this. I hope you learned a lot from this video. We covered off quite a bit of content and hopefully this gives you enough to really dive deep into Matplotlib's bar charts. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please consider liking this video and clicking subscribe to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. If you have any questions about anything that we covered off today, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.